The New York Times is out with some new polling that gauges who GOP voters are leaning toward as their preferred presidential nominee. According to the poll, in a matchup between Trump, DeSantis, Ted Cruz, and other GOP hopefuls, Trump led the pack with 49% of the vote, with DeSantis trailing behind at 25%, while Cruz, Pence, and Haley each scored under 10% of the vote. And here's where things get interesting. The poll finds that DeSantis actually beats Trump among those with college degrees at 32% compared to Trump's 28%. But Trump wins with non-college educated voters, 58% to DeSantis's 21%. CEO of Status Quo News, Jordan Cheriton, and Newsweek contributor Denise Long join us to discuss. Welcome to you both. Good morning. Hi. Okay, Denise, what do you make of this? Uh, when we talk about Democrats versus Republicans in a lot of these matchups, uh, you know, there's almost a, uh, you know, disdain for the fact that Democrats tend to do better with college educator voters. It seems uh, proof of the fact that they are elite and out of touch. Can the same be said of DeSantis here as we look at the split uh, between Trump and DeSantis among Republican voters? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I did not look at polling results for how DeSantis is, how DeSantis fared uh, from an educational standpoint when he won the governorship for Florida. Uh, you know, many Americans do not have a college uh, education. I believe the vast majority don't, um, and so. You know, and it's something to be said that there is an elitism that happens there, but there's also a way in which people who attend college sort of view uh, the world through a philosophical lens that perhaps that that they get from being in liberal uh, education environments. I am fascinated by the fact that um, I think Donald Trump lost the lost the presidential election from uh, 2020 because white men in particular felt a certain kind of way about he rep how he represented them um, during his presidency. So I'm really fascinated by the fact that he mo more men than women in this poll of 350 people um, supported uh, Trump so strongly. Mm -hmm. Jordan, you know, what do you make of this? Trump's strength with non-college educated voters uh, is is a significant factor, obviously, you know, in his prior uh, victories and, and probably suggests that even in this poll now that he's being probably underrated. And maybe maybe by by me, I think I've been sounding the it's going to be DeSantis uh, kind of note. But Trump has this just this base of support among a group of voters who are not well represented in in the ranks of the media of elite society of the take makers and causes him i think to be underrated and and under under uh, uh appreciated as as a still a force because he speaks for these voters according to them you might you know disagree with that his policies match what these voters want but they seem to like him yeah, I think you're ready for Ron uh, posters are going to have to wait. I, I think this uh, poll and uh, other polls, I mean, it's kind of remarkable. Uh, Trump doesn't have Twitter anymore. Uh, frankly, the January 6 hearings have been pretty brutal for him. I think even it's breaking through with some Republicans. And he still kind of has a stranglehold uh, on the non-college educated, which is now the base of the Republican Party, particularly in primaries. Uh, even if you look at the college educated, sure. DeSantis, you know, has kind of a, a four, I think it was four points within the margin of error. But uh, the non-college educated uh, voters, which is the Republican base, Trump still has, uh, you know, that on stranglehold. And I also think noteworthy in the poll is the Fox News factor. Uh, the Fox News audience, 62 percent uh, support Trump compared to 26 percent, you know, as we know, kind of as Fox go. Fox goes, so goes the Republican Party uh, and primary. So I think at this point, you know, there's been a lot of media, you know, pushing uh, DeSantis less toxic version of Trump. And, you know, maybe uh, maybe Trump's time has passed, but I, I don't see it. I also think if Trump announces he's going to run and reports are it could be earlier, you would assume Twitter uh, and others would would have to, uh, you know, reinstate him. And, and once you have uh, the base hearing from Trump a lot more, uh, you know, potentially every hour on the hour, uh, I think that's just going to stoke uh, more support for Trump. Mm. 
Well, he might not be on Twitter, but he certainly has uh, the ability to get his messaging out on the, this Twitter alternative app and recently came for <laughs> Elon Musk. Uh, he's one person who probably uh, won't be on the team Trump after Trump called him a BS artist saying, quote, I don't hate the man, but it's time for Trump to hang up and sail into the sunset, adding that he's too old for the presidency. Trump then fired back at Musk, blasting his rocket ships to nowhere and driverless cars that crash, adding that Musk would be worthless without government <laughs> subsidies. Do we, do we have that uh, whole statement put on the screen? Yeah, it it's pretty, pretty it's incredible delicious. if we have it. I don't know if we have it, but it's, uh, I, I thought it was funny. Um, did you guys see this, uh, D Denise? No, I haven't seen it, but uh, it, it, it sounds like something that uh, the former president would absolutely, absolutely say. Do you th so <laughs> I don't know who kind of triumphs kind of in, in, the, in the narrative war or whatever if Elon Musk and Donald Trump are fighting. So Elon prefers DeSantis. Elon wants DeSantis. Mm -hmm. I don't think Eli. Oh, there it is. Yeah, the picture. Is the picture really sets it off too, because having him standing there in this kind of weirdly submissive position, they were obviously having some kind of cordial interchange. And for Trump to end this tweet, he ends it. Um, uh, I'll just read it, the whole telling, Okay. When Elon Musk came to the White House asking me for help on all of his many subsidized projects, whether it's electric cars that don't drive long enough, driverless cars that crash, or rocket ships to nowhere without which subsidies he'd be worthless, telling me how he was a big <laughs> Trump fan and Republican, I could have said, drop to your knees and beg, and he would have done it. <laughs> Oh, which, you know, it's kind of a fair hit, I guess. It's, it's incredible. Like, few people have been able to best Elon in these Twitter wars. Yeah. But it, it's, that was it's, a good one. it kind of feels like a Mothra v. <laughs> Godzilla situation where you got to kind of put another bad guy, <laughs> the other bad guy to take each other down. So how do you think voters are going to feel about Musk's sentiment here that the Don should just sail away into the sunset? You know, is, is that a sentiment that's going to be more, more widely held, do you think? I think it's a question that people are wrestling with. So there are a couple things. One, uh, if President Trump, former President Trump, should run again, there's this question also about age, right? And mm. what that means, right? Where the next, the previous generation is making decisions that, you know, in 10 years, you know, they may not be around to actually see the impact, impact of. But it's also important to note that if I understand the sequence of events properly, Elon took a hit at Donald Trump. And when you hit at Donald Trump, he's going to hit you back and it's going to be absolutely merciless. And I think we all, you know, recognize recognize that about him. And there's absolutely nothing new about that, right? In terms of how in terms of how he uh, how he shows up. And I think part of the reason that people are having this is that it's not that they necessarily disagree with President Trump's policies as much as they think that he is a risk to the Republican Party and down ballot uh, candidates actually mm. actually winning. Uh, you know, and part of this raises a question for me about, of course, January 6th. And I really think people need to ask themselves, and I'm not defending what happened on January 6th in terms of the mayhem and all people defecating in our capital. Like, that makes no sense to me. However, the idea that 75% of the people who poll were polled said he was just defending his right to protest the election results, but somehow 25% said 20% said that he had gone less than 20% said he had gone too far. So how far is too far? And what are the obligations of citizens and elected officials if they perceive and understand that based on data, it is too early to certify an election because it may have been tampered with? And do people think that our elections are infallible and that they can't be tampered with. I think that's the conversation that we should be having as a larger American populace. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, what do you make of that, Jordan? I mean, I think the argument, the argument that people have been making and what's been coming out of the 1-6 hearings is that there wasn't any reasonable, credible um, basis on which Trump to hold that belief and that it was all a lot of pretext. And the fact that he represented that there was reason to want to take more time to certify the election res results or not certify them at all was simply a naked power grab. What do you say? 
Well, I should just say, going backwards, uh, it's really rich Trump talking about must subsidies since Trump got hundreds of millions of dollars from New York on his real estate properties. All sorts of tax breaks. But I digress. Uh, yeah, I, I agree uh, with my panelists here. I think that Honestly, I don't know how much the Republican base, those hardcore Trumpers, care so much about uh, January 6th. Um, but what I do believe is the only person at this point that could beat Trump is Trump. People are tired of hearing of 2020. I don't think the Republican base is like upset at Trump by and large for what happened, but they're tired of hearing about, you know, oh, he lost this and that. Uh, where Trump's sweet, sweet spot is, is focusing on inflation, uh, saying, uh, I left the historic economy, even though that's BS, and look what Biden did to it. Uh, I think he could hit uh, DeSantis on DeSantis. Uh, right now, Disney isn't moving, uh, has not moved 2,000 jobs that it was going to move from California to Florida because of DeSantis' uh, attack on Disney down in Florida. So Trump uh, retroactively continuing to insist on this BS election stuff, focusing on the 2020 election rather than uh, a laser focus on inflation, gas, food, uh, Biden's, you know, making us a third world country. That, I think, would be Trump's sweet spot. But I think he's too much of a megalomaniac to forget about 2020. Yeah. Right. And Denise, and that's a real liability for Trump if he decides to seek the nomination again, that he will be so you know, looking in the rearview mirror, focusing on these past grievances that he just, like, as a human being, is not kind of capable of, of moving beyond. And, e you know, even if the, the base, a significant, as you said, portion of the base, you know, kind of agrees with him or, or at least doesn't want to publicly disagree with him or doesn't, you know, likes the guy and is supportive of him, they don't, I don't think they, they don't want to be, re they know that constantly relitigating all that stuff is not a, is not an electorally winning sort of platform mm. to run on. You got to run on on inflation, on 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 what's going on, the suffering that pe the very real suffering that that people uh, feel. So I don't know if 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 the republic I mean the Republican base is going to put up with it, I guess, if if Trump well, decides that, to go for it, they have that, no choice, but that, it is a real liability. To that end, Robbie, according to a political morning consult poll, only 35% of respondents want Trump to run while 61% say no to the former president. Meanwhile, Biden actually got even lower marks on the poll with only 29% of respondents saying Biden should run in 2024 and 64% saying he should bow out. So is this just all everyone saying, we did 2020, we did the, the Biden-Trump mashup, we don't want it again? Or is this a substantive critique of one or both of these candidates, Denise? Yeah, I'd be curious to know how the question was framed, like, is what is there actually the question or is it something along the lines of if there were another candidate that could blah, 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 you know, how the questions and how their frame really determines mm -hmm. it. I think Biden is the person who's making us suffer right now. <laughs> right. And how polar opposite are the two of them from uh, immigration to inflation, as my fellow panelists said, in regard to Trump leaving, you know, these highest uh, black employment and all of the all of the numbers and things. Um, so I think Biden is making us suffer right now. And so the pain that we're feeling kind of drives um, people's uh, disinterest in him. And I think this January 6th uh, sort of continual pot stirring also makes people uh, turned off a little bit um, by Donald Trump. So I think people are looking for a place to land right now, and it's going to be a really interesting election cycle. What a system that we keep getting served up these uniquely <laughs> unpopular, <laughs> despised political figures in an either or choice among people that lots of Americans don't care for either, very particularly. But uh, Jordan and Denise, thank you so much for joining us. Thank Thanks. you. Good to see you. And we'll have more Rising right after this.